when working on a large list with column headers and row headers. You can improve the legibility of your data by highlighting the row and column of the selected cell. If you click on another cell, a different row and column are highlighted. But if you click outside the list, nothing is highlighted. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you two methods for doing this, either with conditional formatting or with a simple VBA code. Let me know in a comment which method you prefer. So let's dive in. In this worksheet, I have a list consisting of five columns and 25 rows. I would like when I select a cell, like cell C8, the entire column C and row number 8 are highlighted. But if I select a different cell, let it be cell B12, then column B and row number 12 will be highlighted. I will be creating this functionality using two different methods. The first one is conditional formatting and the second one is a VBA code. Let's start with conditional formatting. Before I create my conditional formatting rule, I would like to explain a simple function that returns information about the active cell. So if I type equal cell and then I hit tab, this is the information I can return if I want to know the row number. I select row and then I hit tab, I close the bracket and when I hit control enter it says the active cell is in row number 4. What if I create the cell function in another cell, equal cell, and then I hit tab. This time I want to return the information about the column. Then I select column, I close the bracket, I hit control enter, it says you are in column number 8. If I select a totally different cell, then these two functions will recalculate. But I need to go to the formulas tab of the ribbon and click on calculate now. Alternatively, I have to hit the F9 key. So when I hit F9, I'm in row number 10 and column number 5. I'll be using these two functions to create my conditional formatting rule in which I'll be comparing the row of the active cell to the row of my list and the column of the active cell to the column of my list where I'm creating my conditional formatting rule. Let me create the formula outside. I'll be typing equal or and I put the two logical tests. If the column of the active cell is equal to column, that's the first logical test. The second logical test if the row of the active cell is equal to row. And it's not important to create it outside. I'm just demonstrating. For now, I'm going to copy this function. Control C to copy. I select the entire range where I'll be creating my rule. I go to the home tab of the ribbon, click on conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula, and in the formula box, I type an equal sign and I paste my functions. Now, how would you like to format it? I click on format. I want a yellow color. I hit OK and another OK. And now I can see the row and columns of the active cell are highlighted in yellow. What if I select a different cell? Now nothing happens. For the conditional formatting rule to reflect my selection, I have to go to the formulas tab of the ribbon and click on calculate now. Alternatively, I hit the F9 key. If I select a different cell, I have to hit the F9 key to recalculate. And that's not practical. Instead of hitting the F9 key, I can write a very simple code in VBA that is triggered with the change of the selected cell. To do that, I right click on the sheet tab and I select view code. My code will be triggered by selecting a different cell. We call it the selection change event. So we have a drop list. I click on the down arrow of the drop list and I select worksheet and here is the event code to which I want to add two single words, application.calculate. These two words are the equivalent of going to the formulas tab of the ribbon and clicking on calculate now or hitting F9. I can close the Visual Basic Editor and enjoy. When I select a different cell, 
then conditional formatting automatically selects the column and the row of the active cell. But I have another problem. If I click outside, the rule is triggered as well. I'm clicking outside and the entire row is selected. And if I'm clicking below the list, the entire column is selected. I just want the rule to be triggered within this range. Then I'm going to edit my formula and add two more conditions. I edit my formula here in the worksheet by hitting F2, and I'm going to wrap this OR function in an AND function. All this OR function is my first condition. Then I click before the OR and I type AND, and then I hit TAB. I click after the closing bracket of the OR function, and I say the row of the active cell must be less than 26. I then type a comma, and I say, the column of the active cell must be less than 6. Of course, for your work situation, you need to change these numbers. I have 5 columns and 25 rows, and this will be the rule I'll be using in the conditional formatting dialog box. Let me copy it, Control c I hit Escape, and I'm going to delete all these calculations and let's go to conditional formatting one more time. I select the same range and I go to the Home tab. I click on the down arrow for conditional formatting. This time I select Manage Rule. This is the only rule I have. I'm going to edit the rule. And instead of this function, I'm going to paste my end function with the three conditions. Where I hit OK and then other OK. Now if I click outside, the rule is triggered. It highlights the entire column and the entire row. If I change my selection, conditional formatting updates. But if I click outside, nothing happens. And we were successful in creating our rule. I have a challenge question for you. Do you know that behind the scene, Excel doesn't see the column letters, but it sees column numbers? How do you show the column number? Because if you have a worksheet having 265 columns, you don't want to keep counting the columns manually. Write me down in a comment, how do you reveal the number of the column? I showed you the first solution by using conditional formatting, and now I'm going to move to the next worksheet, VBA, to show you the other solution. It's a simple code, so don't be intimidated by writing a VBA code. I click on the worksheet VBA and I have the same exact list and I'm going to create a code that changes the color of the column and the row of the active cell. VBA is an object-oriented language, which means we need to specify an object and say, what do we want to do? Which action do we want to do on that object? We call it a method. We might need to provide the value or specify a property as well. To switch to the Visual Basic Editor, I right-click on the Sheet tab and I click on View Code. As I did before, it's a selection change event. Then I click on the down arrow of the drop list and select Worksheet. I need to make some room for writing two simple lines of code. I hit Enter twice and then I go up and I start writing my code. It's an object-oriented language. The object is either the entire row of my target, which is the active cell, or the entire column of my target, which is the active cell. Then I type target.entireColumn. What do you want to do? I want to change the fill color. I want to change the interior. So I type dot interior dot color index. What's the value of the color index? If you want yellow, you type six. If you want green, you type four. These are the different colors we have Feel free to select the color you want. I want a green color, then I type equal 4. The next line will be similar to this one, but instead of entire column, I want the entire row. And I finished creating my code. Let's switch to Excel. I can use this time the shortcut Alt F11, and I want to test. When I select a different cell, then the code is triggered, and I can see the entire column and the entire row colored in green. What if I select a different cell? Then I have a problem. The previous column and the previous row are still colored in green, and I'm just highlighting another column and another row. 
before I trigger the code with another selection, I want first to remove the previous color and then execute the two lines I created. And that's very simple. I switch to the Visual Basic Editor, Alt F11. And before executing these two lines, I'm going to add a line that says cells.interior.colorIndex. I don't want any color. We call it Excel color index none cells.interior.colorIndex equals Excel color index none, then before executing the two lines of code, we'll be clearing the previous color. Let's test. Alt F11, I select a different cell, and sure enough, the code is working fine. However, what will happen if I select a cell outside the range? Then the code is triggered as well, and the entire column and the entire row are highlighted. I don't want that to happen and I just want my code to be triggered if I select a cell within my range, within my list. My list consists of five columns and 25 rows. Then I'm going to add a conditional statement to my code to evaluate whether I'm in the range or not. Let's switch to VBA, Alt F11, and before the first line of code, I start by typing my conditional statement. If target.column is less than 6 and target.row is less than 26, then go ahead and do this. Otherwise, what do you want to do? Then I type else, I hit enter, and I want to clear the color, which is the same previous line of code, cell.interior.colorIndex equals Excel color index none. I need to close the if statement, so I'll be typing and if, and I'm done. I finished creating my code. I can indent the code to improve the legibility. I close the Visual Basic Editor. If I select a cell within the range, then automatically the column and row are highlighted. If I click outside, then the colors are cleared and no column or rows are selected. I showed you two methods for highlighting the column and row of the active cell. Which method you prefer? Write me down in a comment. And I hope you found value in this tutorial. So if you like it, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to support my channel and to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.